If, so go if, on. An, if in anyone doesn't know who she is, please swap places with the queue, the snaking queue outside, <laughs> the people trying to get in. But I will just make one claim about Priyanka, and I'd be happy if any one of you or anyone on social media would like to factually refute that claim. And my claim is as follows. I believe that statistically and, and factually, Priyanka Chopra is the most accomplished acting professional to come from the Indian film industry. Have a think about it. Have a think about it. There isn't anyone else, male or female, in this generation or any prior generation, who has simultaneously had the kind of success she's had domestically, whether it's box office returns, national awards, and simultaneously been the protagonist and the lead antagonist in mainstream TV and movies in the West. Can you think of anyone else? I can't, but I'll be happy to spar on that one uh, <laughs> later on. So a truly accomplished and trailblazing success story. Priyanka, Thank very glad to have you here. Thank you. As you know, the theme Aap of this... You, you like must sit down, because okay. then I'll have to stand, no, and no, then no, we'll fine. do this whole thing of like... We'll do that along the way, All right, hopefully. Right. We'll get up in a little bit. So you know the, the conference, theme of the conference is yes. education and skills, mm -hmm. celebrating teachers, how do we uh, prepare ourselves for the future, mm -hmm. and 2030 is the date in the calendar. Um, and as you know, it's not just skills and training, it's also attitude, resilience, empathy, uh, cross-cultural sensitivity, all of those things uh, for, for which you are a role model, not just for, uh, for girls, but, but boys, men, women, everybody. So let's start from the start, if I may, to the beginning of your professional career. Where did it start and how did it start? Well, I was supposed to be an engineer. I come from a very academic background. Both my parents are um, doctors. And because they're both doctors, I knew I didn't want to be one. Because, you know, when you're a doctor's child, you're like literally raised in a hospital yourself. You like go with your parents. You're at night duty with them. The nurses are your best friend. Formaldehyde is the only thing you know how to smell. <laughs> it's a disaster. So I was like, I'm never going to be a doctor. And I decided. Um, I was very academically inclined. I loved physics and math. I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. I wanted to build planes. And um, when I came back from America, I went to high school in America, and I came back at the age of 16. And my mom thought, like most moms do, that my daughter is the prettiest girl in the room. And I was getting photographs taken in, you know, um, a small Photoshop in Bareilly. Uh, just for a scholarship program for Australia where I wanted to apply. And the photographer was like, oh, you know, you're really pretty. Can I take some more pictures? And for a 16-year-old girl, you know, your, your vanity is peaked at that point. I was like, sure, 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 of course. I will allow it. Soft focus pictures with my hand on my, on my chin like that, like disaster. Um, <laughs> anyway, those pictures were sent in by my mother to Miss India. For some reason, they picked me. I won that pageant, then I won Miss World. I was still just 18. Movie offers from Indian movies started coming my way. I didn't know what to do, uh, but my dad and I had a chat, and my father told me that, you know, I never want you to have a what if in your life. You're 18 years old, give it a shot for a year and a half. If you're terrible, you can always go back to college. You'll know you can't act. Right. And if you're not, then you'll know that you found your calling. So, so would you say that the, the first launch pad into this world was almost accidental. It's oh, not for something sure. It was a fluke. To, it's not something you wanted to do all your life. No. Do you believe in happy accidents or fate or act of God that sort of guides us into... I believe in destiny. I do believe that destiny and hard work go hand in hand. Um, destiny will make you find opportunities. It is up to you and your aptitude to recognize them. Um, I was not born with a silver spoon. I think none of us are. And there's no, re there's no um, you can't replace hard work, hustle. Yeah. You cannot replace, you know, wanting something bad enough and actually going after it. But is the move from being beauty queen to an actor automatic? Does that sort of happen to everybody? No, it, it doesn't. Um, we've seen, as, as the Indian media loves to point out sometimes, uh, models can't act, how many models have been actors, 
Yeah. And beauty queens, how many beauty queens have been actors? We, we get thrown that all the time. But um, to me, I think it's a very organic process and it's very individual. The first opportunity for your first or second film, or maybe even a third one will come to you because you're a famous beauty queen or you're the son and daughter of someone or you're recommended by someone. But the audience is too intelligent today. Um, they always have been. They know who they want to watch. It, and it's, it's called an, that's why it's called an X factor. Yes. You, don't, you, can't be, you don't have to be the prettiest girl in the room. You don't have to be the most talented. People just want to watch people mm -hmm. sometimes. And that's what happened to me. And we can see that you know, not everyone who perhaps made that move sustained over, right. over time. Um, I have a question that I want to get it out of the way. You've, you've said once that you're a proud feminist. Yes. Is that compatible with beauty pageants? So what does feminism mean to you as a man? <laughs> Me? I... Uh... No, I'll answer the question that way because I, I really do want to... I just want to get a perspective. I take my cue from Justin Trudeau. Okay. That's a good person to take a cue from. It's, it's equality. It's coming at equality from the angle of perhaps the side that may not have had equality. So basically, it's tell, giving women the ability to make their own choices without being judged. Yes. So who decides if a beauty pageant is feminist or not? Who, that's my decision right. as someone being a part of a beauty pageant. And for me, it was amazing. It gave me wings. It gave me the ability to stand on my own feet and find a career. So as a feminist, an extremely proud feminist, I'm really glad that that was a stepping stone in my own decision. So when people always have this argument about beauty pageants versus, oh my God, that has nothing to do with feminism, that's exactly what feminism stands for. Let a woman do what she wants without judging her. Stop telling her what to do. Stop telling her how to be. She better be. Thank you. Right. But do you get that? Is there, is there prejudice yeah. around? I get it all the time. <laughs> you know, I get it all the time, too. Right? Yeah. You, say, I know. Say, you must have been, we have our beauty pageant past yeah. and everything. You say you're just a pretty face and no one takes you seriously. <laughs> no, but <laughs> uh, prejudice, I guess, um, while we're on the topic, um, hashtag time's up. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, <coughs> how would you describe what's going on, that movement? And what does it mean in particular for girls and boys growing up right now? I think it's such an interesting time um, for our generation right now um, with the verses, uh, vices and virtues of, of social media like we keep discussing. Um, I think that it has given, yes, there are many, there are good and bad, there's good and bad to everything. But what I think is amazing about social media is the empowerment that you get. So when somebody comes together and says hashtag time's up or when you talk about the Me, Me Too movement, and you see how it sort of brought the globe together and it brought young people all over the world, different races, different colors, different religions, together on social media talking about, basically time's up to me is, we're not gonna stay silent anymore. Whatever it is, whichever country it is, whatever the problem is, you're not going to be able to tell someone to, um, you know, to not speak up against something that's happening to them, um, whether that's not the lack of education or yeah. not having the rights to be able to live life the way you want, whether it's being violated sexually, um, emotionally, physically. However, time's up. You're not going to be able to silence our voices anymore because we stand by each other. And that is such a powerful thing to have happened. And that's happened with this generation, which is wonderful. So kids shouldn't feel despondent about it when they read the gender pay gap is, has been there, it's here to stay. Should they feel despondent or should, should they feel empowered? I mean, if you want to feel so despondent, then we should have felt despondent for the last thousands of years because right. that was our normal. Yeah. Now at least we've come to a point where we're saying that's not going to be normal. We are not okay with it being normal. We're going to stand up for our rights and you actually have brothers in arms who stand next to you and say, Yes, we stand up for this yes. girl, or we stand up for this guy, and what they're saying is right. And that never happened before. It's such a powerful time. Absolutely. You know, you, you described it as a global movement. Yeah. Uh, I've also heard you talk about the need for more global citizens. Yes. Uh, which I love to hear personally, because I'm, uh, I'm a poster child of a, of a global citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, but isn't that the problem? It, doesn't it mean that if you're a citizen of the globe, you're a citizen of nowhere? I don't think so. 
I think your roots define who you are. You can never, I mean, you can if you decide to, but you can never erase where you came from or where you were born. I'm yeah. proudly Indian. Wherever I go, um, I am as desi as it can get. But that doesn't necessarily, thank you. Especially because my achar travels with me wherever in the world I go. But I'm as desi as it gets, but that doesn't mean I'm not concerned or aware about what's happening in the world. That doesn't mean that if I'm living in India or if I'm living in America, I won't be concerned about what's happening in Europe or what's happening in Sierra Leone or what's happening in Jordan. You know, I am a global citizen because the world matters to me. And when I talk about everyone becoming a global citizen, the privileged lot of us are sitting in this room, educators, influencers, people who have the ability to have a roof on their heads, make decisions for ourselves. Everybody in the world today is trying to work really hard to make sure that their kids have a great future, that they can do the best that they can for their families. And I think a global citizen someone, is someone who's aware of their privilege and understands that no matter where in the world I go, there will be someone who will be lesser off than you. So it makes it your responsibility. Wonderful. So it doesn't take things away. Not at all. It adds it, to you. It adds to, yeah, adds it absolutely to that. absolutely adds to you. So you don't think people question authenticity if you're more than one, you say I belong to more than one place. I get called a coconut, for example, like brown from the outside, white from the inside. <laughs> have you heard that? Now I no? have. But don't laugh. <laughs> See, they're laughing. No, I think that's terrible. That's a terrible, terrible stereotype. Yeah. What's wrong with people? That's right. I mean, we have South Asians who've lived in America and the UK for eons. Yeah, um, yeah we were brought there in ships, right. but well, we, I, 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 we, <laughs> we stayed. And I, we did a I lot. love your positive definition. You know, you are. I, I've seen you be very multicultural, at least bicultural. Yes. Um, I've watched uh, clips of you on you on the Seth Meyers show, Stephen Colbert show. Yeah. Um, quite a few others, and now, of course, you're on the Lutfi Siddiqui show. I'm on the Lutfi Siddiqui show. show. I am. But I noticed that, you know, there you, uh, you walk on stage, and they either get a hug or a peck on the cheek, and I, I got neither of, of the two. It's because you were standing so far away. Come on, we have to do this. Okay. Hi. Uh, oh, hi. so good to see you. That's amazing. Oh. I wasn't fishing I'm for that. I'm Eid Manali. Yeah. We the did other, Eid Mubarak a little earlier than we should have. The, the other thing is, I know you are sensitive to the word Bollywood. Um, and I, yes. No, continue. Uh, and and your it's, question. It's, I, have, I have American friends who are also sensitive to the word Humbai or Hombay. I think you should use that. You, you keep, like in Bollywood, you keep um, the rest of Hollywood, but you see how to be to the, to the start of it. It wasn't us. No? It wasn't like Bollywood suddenly decided, said, hmm, how are we going to be a Me Too of Hollywood? No, we didn't. It was, I think, a name, I haven't gone back to how it originated, but it was a name that was given to us because it was Bombay, it was a film in industry, right. so it somehow became Bollywood. I did not have a problem with the word until I started working in America and until I started working internationally. Um, the more I worked abroad, the more I realized that the word Bollywood has been reduced to a stereotype of every time I, everyone I meet, by the way, in America, I don't think you should say the light bulb made up for dancing. Pick that up. Yeah. Thing people should not do that stereotype. Like there's do a flavor. <laughs> um, I just took a Zumba class, so that's the. Movies, yeah, um, yeah, and all the in, in all the different languages. And I show Quantico. I'm an FBI agent who breaks down doors. I mean, my ethnicity has nothing yeah. to do with my character. You know, you mentioned yesterday that you're on a work visa in the U.S. Yeah. You know how hard it is to get a visa. You have to prove that they couldn't find somebody local who could have done that job. Isn't that right? That's the criteria for it's visa. It's called the ali an alien with extraordinary abilities, That's which right. means that no yeah. one else in the world can do what you do. Hence, me sitting right here. Excellent. That's <laughs> Wonderful. 
But I do think that if you start referring to Hollywood as either Mumbai or Hombay... What would Hollywood be like if it's in Los Angeles? So it'll catch on, it'll trend. It's Hombay. Think about it this way. You leave the H from Hollywood... So you're saying we should call ourselves Hombay? No, call them Hombay. You leave the H in Hollywood and attach Mumbai or Bombay to the rest of it. That's or exactly like the... Uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, that works too. Right? Like, like hashtag bo boss bo and... It's we, not. We, Let's we need just to leave play Hollywood with that. aside and, play with that. and the Hindi film okay. industry separate. So slightly, play. slightly more serious, I guess. Right. Your um, your social causes. Yes. Of which there are many. There's education that you've mm -hmm. spoken of. There's refugees and displaced people. Would you like to share with us your experience of uh, the refugee camp in Jordan that you've been to? Well, um, I've been associated with UNICEF now for over a decade, and to me, um, the privilege of being able to work with an organization like UNICEF is, is I get to do a lot of field work and travel around the world and, you know, meet such inspiring people who live in such dire circumstances but still have the ability to find hope in the world. Like, sometimes I think if everything of mine was sto stolen from me, displaced from war, and I was made to live under a tent roof and, you know, have my children survive and not being able to send them to school and not be completely uncertain of my future, I'd be angry at the world. Yeah. I'd be angry at the world for not caring. And I understand that. I mean, so many kids around the world, especially with all the war-ravaged, conflict-ravaged areas um, in Syria and around the world, those kids, all they wanted was books. All they wanted were teachers. All they wanted was to be able to have some sort of grip on their future so that they didn't have a generation of children that were not educated and could not get jobs. And each one that I met at this um, refugee camp in Jordan spoke to me about wanting to go back and rebuild Syria. And not angry at Syria, not angry at anything that happened, but they said, we want to go back and rebuild our country. And that was just incredible for me. I remember it was horrible because I, I, I flew directly from Jordan and that Syrian refugee camp for the Emmys that year, last year. And um, my dress was this custom-made Balmain gown and I was wearing about 50 carats of diamonds that day. And when I landed in for the Emmys, I remember I was sitting for hair and makeup and my, my makeup artist was doing my makeup and I suddenly like, had tears down my eyes and she said, what happened? I said, this just, in my head, I can't. I mean, from where I have come and what I've seen and how little people have to survive on, and then there is this business that I have to do what I do. But I was explained that we're a means to an end as yes. public people. And if I didn't do this, I guess I wouldn't have the opportunity to bring light to that. That's right. But as a human being, it shook me to my core. You, you bring spotlight to, to these things. Closer to home, I don't know if you have been following the Rohingya crisis. Yes, I have. Um, people displaced in Myanmar across yes, the I border. And it's any, unbelievable. Any like, thoughts the on that? that. Any, um, I mean, just around the world, and, and this is, I'm hoping I can, and I can do a field visit um, soon. I hope that can happen through UNICEF. We've, we've been working on it. But um, I just think around the world, just. We've, have we become, as a society, desensitized to this? Do we wake up every morning and we read about hundreds of children? We see kids washing up on the shore. We see dead children. Are we desensitized? We hear about shootings in America. We hear about bombings in Syria. We hear about genocide in, in Rohingya. It's like, so as a world, I feel like my thoughts are that. My thoughts are. Can we not ignore the parts of the world where this is happening? Can we be affected as human beings? Can we sit down and feel in our hearts and in our guts that this is wrong and as a global society make noise enough to be able to change do, things? Do you see this as a, as a failure of leadership? I mean, I don't, I don't see this as a failure of leadership. Including I Nobel definitely, Prize winning leadership. No, I do, think that, I, I do think that leadership needs to definitely change its gaze. And uh, definitely leadership governments around the world need to be able to, you know, understand that this is a humanitarian crisis around the world. This is not a regional crisis. This is human beings. 
And yes, as a world, we need to pay more attention to it. I definitely think so. So I have a few more questions, but let me open it up to the, to the yes, audience please. before I, I get to those. Um, there's quite a few hands up there. You know, I made uh, the mistake of asking social media if they had any questions. <laughs> and I will I'm not, sure you got a few. I will not ask you some of those. So for example, when are you getting married? Um, predictable. Women around the world, the perils of being a woman. Um, <laughs> There's, there's somebody else who wanted you to sing, won't ask you to do that either. But let's take questions, I'll, I'll do a sweep. Um, let me do the lady over there, and then I'll come to you. There were two ladies, you have to pick, a, pick one. Three, four ladies. Yeah, the, the lady over here, sorry. Thank you. Hi, it's really nice to see you. Uh, Hi, sorry, what's your name? My name is Oneza, I'm an early years teacher. And I, I just wanted to ask you a question regarding, it, it's a lighthearted question. Would you hold the mic closer? So, yeah. It's a lighthearted question. Okay. Um, regarding the Hollywood Bollywood thing, uh, at, if we're talking about being global citizens, if if that side of the uh, of the world has maybe given Indian cinema that name, is it maybe part of being global a global citizen to accept it and be happy with it and you know sort of fix the issues they're having with it and not. Uh, um, and help them understand that it's not only about this. Yeah, no, um, I don't know who gave the world. I don't know if it is um, Hollywood that gave us the name. So okay. I'm, I didn't claim that. I don't know who gave us the name. Sure. But I think you're right. I could be like, yes, I'm Bollywood, and this is not how we dance, and we don't only randomly break out into song and dance our story. Like, I've always tried to be an educator of people um, about Indian cinema, but I feel like the word somehow, which is why I'm against it, I wasn't against it before, sure. but after experiencing what the word pigeonholes us into, sure. that's why I feel like I'm a little against it at the moment, because as soon as you say Bollywood, it, it's called face jewelry and henna. <laughs> like it's the, I mean, I'm one person, it's really hard <laughs> to be able to change the minds of all, of everyone around the world by just sure. me. So I feel like it just pigeonholes us and puts us in that box, so until, we can change that until we can become a p major part of global entertainment. Um, I think I would not like to, yeah. to use that I, word I as much. I think you're a big part of changing that okay. view about Bollywood, that it's only, not, it's only dancing and so on. Let's, uh, and let's which is exactly what I'm, I'm trying to do. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's just hear that lady out and then we'll move the mic here. Hi, my Hi. name is Esther. Hi, Esther. Um, I just have a question for you, being a woman from India. Um, as someone who is very passionate about tackling social and justice issues in India when it comes to being a woman, what advice do you have for a woman who's interested in tackling issues like that in a society that is so male-focused? Uh, that's a really amazing question because it's something that women face all over the world. In a few parts of the world, yes, we have the ability to speak our voices and be applauded for it, but in a lot of emerging um, countries, we are not applauded for it. Women with opinions, women with voices are said to be too forward, um, too fast, too smart, too ambitious, too bossy. Um, yeah, whereas when men do it, it's supposed to be driven and sometimes even sexy. But, <laughs> but when it comes to girls, it's not. And the way I see it is, look, we've for eons been told that women are second-class citizens. For such a long time, a woman's job has been only restricted to having children, making sure, um, being homemakers. But that's not all a woman is about, right? We're so good at multitasking. I think it'll take brave young women like you to actually set examples for your peers within your communities, um, parents, helping their girls, their daughters find their feet, making sure they are educated, not getting them married off really young. But it will take our generation to change it for the next generation. So the more conversations you have with your peers, the more loudly I speak about it, the more the women of this generation try and change it, maybe the next generation won't have this question at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take. I try. We'll take three questions in quick succession. So that you're I, up to you. This yeah. is your uh, show. Sure. Just um, to guess. Hi, quickly. Priyanka. I'm Sai from Bangladesh. Hi, Sai. So thank you for taking the interest in doing a crisis. Of course. Uh, moving on a little bit, you started with the feminism part. 
Uh, one of the questions that I asked your peer uh, last year at Davos, Karan Johar, about the objectifying of women in Bollywood is so much, and the influence it has on girls around in our societies. Okay. You have girls who are six or eight years old learning, dancing to these. Uh, what is the learning pattern of there that you think is influencing, and how do you change that? <coughs> um, take a second question. Oh, let me answer one. Okay, I'll find someone. My gosh. Okay, okay. <laughs> Full confusion will happen. You, you have 60 seconds Damn to answer it. the question. No, no, these are big questions and they're very important to be spoken about. But objectification of women in entertainment. Let's not just talk about Bollywood, first of all. Let's just talk about objectification of women in general. Music videos, pop songs, you know. Um, big tentpole movies. Why do th why do those things make money? <laughs> Who's watching it? People are watching it, right? Yeah. Who's buying those tickets? <laughs> Who's saying it's okay to go watch these movies, to go watch these videos, and then we are critiquing the people who are doing it? It's called demand and supply. Don't demand it. Don't ask for it. <laughs> It'll change. That's how I see it. I mean, today there are so many girls who are standing up and saying, I'm not cool with that, I'm not comfortable with that. And then they're replaced. Because that's the demand. That's what men or people or the audience wants to watch. So there's a big, there's a big fight that's happening right now between, between what people will watch, what the demand is, what the supply is, what women are standing up for. And it's a very interesting time. I feel like in the next couple of decades, we'll see a big change in terms of what people watch and how they'd like to watch it. You're already seeing that in entertainment. I mean, a decade ago, you would not really see a woman's face on a poster selling a movie or opening to box office on Friday. And here today, we have female movies which open up to big box office numbers, bigger than the boys sometimes. And that's a change we've seen in our own lifetime. So there's so much to see going forward. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Very quickly, sir. Sorry, I'm, I'm like really rushing through the answers. No, no, no issues. Priyanka, we are running the campaign of Beti Padao, Beti Bachao Ji. in India. Still, you would be seeing there are so many cases of rape, mishandling of women in the country back home. Can you not do something now with our Prime Minister and the team there? Because, you know, women are really unsafe, and I'm coming from Gurgaon. After 8, 8.30 p.m., it's really unsafe for a woman to go to work and becomes difficult. And, you know, we as parents also find it difficult. Can you not do something back there because the country needs you there? I alone will change the country, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Because I can, I'm the only one who can do it. Um, no, this is centuries of mindsets that need to, to, need to be changed. And unfortunately, sir, it's not going to be something easy. I myself um, was raised in Ambala. I've lived in Delhi. I, I understand what you're talking about because I, I spent a lot of time in the north. And I understand how parents are scared sometimes to let their kids go out at night. But this is a really big conversation we are talking about. We are talking about changing thousands and thousands of years of, of the mentality ki ladki um, paraya dhan hai. Ladki boj hai. Ladki jab paida hoti hai, tab utni badi party nahi hoti jitna it would happen when ladke paida hote. So ye sab jo choti choti mentality hai, or when you turn around and say, oh my god, you're crying like a girl. Why is that a bad thing? Oh, he hits like a girl, he punches like a girl. Why is that a bad thing? I mean, we've been taught that for years, for such a long time. Even when it comes to safety, ko, men have been told for a very, very long time that a woman is a commodity. A woman is for your pleasure, for your, to feed you, to keep your home, to raise your children. It's always about yours. It's always about him. So until you, us as parents, teach our sons that the only way to be a better man is to respect a woman, and not degrade her. That's when society will change. When we teach our daughters that you will stand on your own feet, and when we educate our daughters, and when we educate our kids, that's when they'll be able to see a global perspective. So I think slowly, yes, I'm sure our Honorable PM is doing all that he can because his campaign is really big with Beti Paja, uh, Padhao, Beti Bachao. And I'm sure there's a lot that's happening, but the only thing we can actually do is get people to change their mindsets. I think that's a very, very important thing that needs to happen within the world, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Priyanka. Okay, my name is Saika, and I'm a student from Jamara College. Hi, Saika. Um, how are you? I have a question for you. So you said you've come from a very academically driven background. 
And I've noticed in my school and schools across the Middle East that the STEM subjects like maths and science usually take priority over the more creative subjects, even the languages like, science, uh, like art or music. So do you think this is a problem? And if so, how do you think we should tackle it? Um, you think people take the academic subjects over the arts? Yeah. Um, I do think that in our part of the world, uh, people do prefer academic jobs because it, it, it means job safety. You know, being a lawyer, being a doctor, being an engineer. I come from a family of all engineers or all doctors because of the same reason that I think parents feel that if you're educated and you get a degree and you get a job like that, um, it'll assure you a better future. So yes, maybe that's a perspective. But the other perspective is today in the business that we live in, in the world that we live in, job opportunities have expanded so much. Like even if you just think of entertainment, you don't just have to become a director or an actor or a producer to be famous. You can get into media, you can get into digital, you can get into, there are so many aspects, marketing, to just film and entertainment. So in the same way, I think the world has expanded a lot more. And the smart way of doing it is to, and I tell all young kids who come to talk to me about this, make a business plan, okay? A 10-year goal or a five-year goal for your parents. Negotiate. Tell them, this is what I want to be, and for me to become a big media consultant house, I'll have to do this, I'll have to do this, I'll have to do this, I'll have to get a job here, and work them through it. And say, this will be my annual salary, project it. You work on it, you lo I, I do that with my parents. I used to negotiate with my parents, like, properly on pen and paper, pros and cons, and I used to get away with whatever I wanted. So do that. Thank you, thank you. So, Priyanka, I have a dilemma. Yes, sir. I see 12 minutes on the clock. Oh my God, this is really stressful. I've been told that you need to rush, that we don't have much time. Is okay. it okay to take the 12 minutes? Yes, 12 minutes, can we uh, take it? Let's do that. We must I take 12 like, minutes. Uh, we will be taking 12 minutes. Yes, there you go. I'll change faster for the evening. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Priyanka ma'am. My name's Advait. I'm Hi, a student Advait. here uh, in Dubai. Uh, thank you for your answers about the refugees in Jordan or refugees all around the world. Well, about the crisis, we see kids dying, we see uh, people getting something that they don't really deserve. They don't deserve that brutality. Uh, do you think that we've failed as humanity? And while I agree that all of us, uh, all of us have the intellectual wisdom here to know that we need to do something, what do you think we need to do immediately to uh, better the lives of those people who don't really deserve anything of what they've been uh, getting so far? You see, when it comes to conflicts around the world, as humanitarians around the world, we need to feel strongly enough to associate, that's what I do, is to associate yourself with organizations which have the ability to move heads of states and governments. So when I stand at the United Nations General Assembly and I speak to heads of states from around the world, I can implore and say that we need to bring attention to these areas which require it. So being a so for me, that's my biggest ability to do that. You as students have such a huge power to be able to get petitions around the world, write into, write into governments, write into people all the time. Like with Global Citizen, have you heard of Global Citizen? There's um, uh, an organization that I'm, uh, I do a lot of work with, which, uh, where we do a concert every year in New York, and we did one in India last year as well. Uh, we raise a lot of money, and we raise a lot of people, and uh, getting people together to sign petitions to send to governments around the world and heads of states to actually implore them to change laws. So I think that, as students, you have such, the, you have such a strength to be able to do that. Um, that's the maximum we, as citizens of the world, can do. Thanks a lot for your answer. And well, to everyone here, if we thought that Priyanka was just an actress after today rather than a wonderful person, I would be disappointed. I think all of us who've been here have had the pleasure of understanding that she is a wonderful person. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, guys. So Hi, Priyanka. I'm Priya. Hi, Priya. Uh, so uh, apart from crushing at, uh, it at, Bollywood, uh, at Hollywood, uh, I was just seeing that uh, your Pebble Productions is also producing films in Marathi and uh, Bhojpuri cinema. So do you consider yourself to be an entrepreneur? And also, uh, it's, it's, I'm not able to connect, you know, like you are being such a big actress and you are also focusing on regional cinemas. Like what is your aim or like what is, uh, what is the goal which you are seeking for? So while everyone's going international, I'm going local. <laughs> um, the way I see it is, um, I was born in Jamshedpur, 
raised in Bareilly, UP, uh, lived, went to school in Lucknow, lived in Mumbai, lived in Boston, lived in New York. I consider myself truly a citizen of the world. And I think storytelling is such a basic art. Your grandmother tells you stories before putting you to bed. My nani used to tell me stories when she used to put coconut oil in my hair. You know, so storytelling is an art. All of us ev across every culture know. So whether it is a giant Hollywood production or a big Hindi movie or like a beautifully small, well-told Marathi ventilator that I made, which was my first Marathi movie, it's just storytelling. And to me, my company, which is Purple Pebble Pictures, um, stands for giving opportunities to new talent. When I joined the film industry, I didn't know anyone. Everybody else was uncle, auntie, um, you know, somebody or the other to somebody or the other. So they'd like grown up together. Every time I went to a party, people would be like, oh, hey, blah, blah. And I didn't know anyone, you know. So um, I wanted to create my company as a sanctuary for filmmakers who feel that way, who feel, you know, if we're coming into the big bad world of movies, where do we go? So my company provides them that. And I'm making films like this year in our roster. We have Punjabi, we have Assamese, we have Marathi. Uh, we are working on a Gujarati. We have also done um, a Sikkimese movie. Um, so I'm trying to explore. I'm also developing um, um, American, like with TV and features. I'm developing a Hindi film. I'm doing a reality show. So yes, I do think I consider myself an entrepreneur. <laughs> and over here, next question. And then one Hi, Priyanka. My name is Nusrat. Right Hi, Nusrat. How are you? Sorry. I'm good, thank you. I'm from Bangladesh. So it's been an honor to hear you speak over the last two days. Thank you. I've been following you all through. <clears throat> so <coughs> as you're the brand ambassador of UNICEF, and you have been that for the more than a decade now, uh, there's something that this uh, skills forum has been uh, telling us or trying to put into our head that in the next 10 to 12 years, it would not be analytical skills that we would be needing. It would be more of empathy and creativity and collaboration and all of that. And I just wanted to know that um, coming from Bangladesh and as a South Asian country where we are struggling to have access to education for girls, how can we work together to integrate those essential qualities that we are talking about at forums like this? into the basic education system in our societies? Um, Thank you. That is a great question. And I think that there are a lot of changes around the world that are being made into school systems. I mean, I do believe that South Asian schools, even though we're fighting for quality education a lot, do prepare us a lot more um, to, to work around the world. I, I went to school in both countries. And it's really hard. It's a lot. But it prepared, it prepared me for school anywhere else in the world when I went. I mean, I did uh, ICSC. And I was like ahead of my class everywhere I went. But to integrate exactly what you're talking about, life skills, to integrate being able to collaborate with each other, I think those are really things that need to be inculcated into the education system all over the world in a big way. Um, and I do hope something happens around that. But while it is not happening, I think it is up to us as society to be able to give children that cohesive upbringing, to be able to give them spaces and places to play, to be able to find their creative side, to be able to, I mean, now we don't have libraries anymore, but like to find those kind of things where um, kids can find their feet and their calling. I think that would be important. Wait, the gentleman uh, over there. Hi, Priyanka. My name's Amlan Roy. And Hello, sir. Uh, I just wanted to uh, get your opinion on one thing. First of all, fantastic interview, great interviewing by Luthi. Thank you. Uh, your parents, or rather your uncle and father went to AFMC at that time in that medical college. You had 20% women. Now when you go to the Delhi medical colleges, there's a reservation cap on women so that not more than 50% women get in. So that's a sign of changing times where women are coming forward and taking up the mantle of the places like in the Western world. So don't you think that that's very good progress? And how would you like to share it in the rest of India. It's only no. happening in the metros, maybe. Well, I think it's an incredible progress, but I feel like it's little things like this which make examples for everyone else to follow. And it's so amazing to see that university do that and set that example, and I hope it's picked up by other people. But really, it is something that, like, I see so many companies standing up for women's rights, standing up for um, women having, you know, the ability to get forward, making sure 
that they are paid according to the job that they do. So there's a big change, but it's never going to be overnight. You see this conversation, debate, and fight needs to continue. It can't die down. The conversation can't die down. And I'm pretty sure we'll see that change because we already are. So I'm getting dagger eyes from people all over. I'm trying to maintain a bit of a gender diversity over here, which is why the... So we've got a lady here very quickly. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Oh, you. Oh. Quick, quick, quick. Okay, three, three questions Someone together this trouble. time around. Hi, Please Priyanka, don't answer until the three questions well. are done. Hi, Priyanka, you yeah. spoke very well. I'm a big follower of you. I just wanted to ask you one quick question. Um, I'm a humble teacher. I work with GEMS. Uh, celebrities like you make a very positive impact on the society and our students. What message would you like to give to our students around the world, around the world who would be listening to you at this point of time or maybe later on YouTube? Could you all kinds of students? Yes, all kinds of students. I always tell, sorry. You're not allowed to answer. Second one, please. I have a gag order. I'll what forget message? the question. No, what message? I'll remember the question. So second question, please. Very quick. This quickly. is just a message, Priyanka. Uh, we've been uh, very, very proud of you listening to you. Not that this is the first time, but our, both our daughters are away to universities, and we would like all the girls of India, the world, to imbibe the values you have, Thank to you. stand up for yourself, and make everyone proud and make the change that you're trying to. You said, I'm alone and I can't do, but I want you to know that your voice is powerful. It reaches a lot of people. So it's not a question, it's a message for you. Okay. Thank you. So I we'll appreciate that question. so much, ladies. Thank yeah. you. Uh, this is a question to the feminist Priyanka. In uh, Indian movies, so are you not a feminist? <laughs> Uh, it, 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 no, 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 hold on. I, I mean, no, I, don't, I am not arguing about I'm just saying I'm I don't know question. too many people who are not feminists uh, uh, anymore. Yeah. So I that's am why asking you a question. Uh, <laughs> let be a day when you will be interviewing me. <laughs> uh, okay, now my question is I'm that very Indi good Indi at Indi it. Indi Indi Indian films, very frequently we see a scene that for some stupidity of a boy, a girl gives a slap. As a feminist, I haven't seen you ever complaining against the abuse of a man. Where is your equality? Where's uh, when, when a, if, if uh, God forbid, if a man slaps a woman, it's a crime, the uh, sky fall on the land, uh, on the Oh, earth. I'm loving this question. Yeah. Bring it. And the other, <laughs> if, if on the screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. a girl slaps a man, yeah, yeah, yeah. where is your protest as a feminist? Where is the equality? Okay. Can I answer that? Please. Can I please answer it? Okay, I'm Th gonna, uh, 30 seconds. Oh my gosh. I can't do it in 30 seconds. This is a, I'm going to start with okay. this one because this is epic. All right. All right, great. So you're saying when a man Eve teases a woman, she slapping him is, is, is what was the word you said? Is abuse of a man. When a man is Eve teasing a woman and she's walking by and he's like, a woman shouldn't go, Chal be, psh. You're saying that's wrong. Because physiologically, men and women are different, sir. I, okay, there is no debate about it. Equality is not about physics. Oh my God, this is so basic. We have to get into it. Okay, when we talk about equality and opportunity, we talk about cerebral opportunity. We are not saying I want to be able to be 200 pounds like a man and beat the shit out of somebody else. We're not saying that. We're saying you get the ability to get the job, to be the CEO, and nobody questions when you're driven at 50 and have three children how you're managing it all. Don't question me. That's what I'm saying. I can be a CEO and a mother. <laughs> so when a girl slaps a guy, when he Eve teases her, he deserves it. Uh, a, a positive message for people on, on, in schools all over the world. Yes, for students all over the world. Yeah. Um, look, it's not like, this is just, this got funny, but... No, 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 I didn't. I, I don't get disturbed, sir. Doesn't, it's not that easy. Don't worry. Um, uh, I, I mean, there's no need to be physically harmful to anyone, men or women, first and foremost. Second of all, I think for my... I, I really talk to students all around the world, and I always say, some of us have the incredible opportunity to go to school. Some of us have the incredible opportunity to get books, to get a quality education. The ones that do, 
the ones who have that opportunity need to remember how privileged they are. Do not take your education for granted. Go to school, graduate, make a future for yourself so that you can make a future for this world. Because we depend on the kids that go to school because there are thousands and millions of kids that in this generation will not have that. So compensate for the ones who don't get it. Make opportunities for the ones who don't have it. Understand your privilege and make, change the world. That's what I would say to students. Can I, can I just say two things? Firstly, yes. I, I don't know that gentleman. Um, secondly, we run out of time, but before... But I'm before still I, curious, sir, are you a feminist? <laughs> No, but just yeah. before we go, just, just for you and, and your lovely wife to understand, feminism truly, and I want to really explain it to men and women, feminism is not about berating men. It is not about saying we are better than men. It is not about putting men down. It is just about saying stop treating us like second class citizens. Let us have opportunities for our experiences. Let us be able to get ahead of the game without having to pull someone else back. Support us. So when you say you're a feminist, you're a supporter of the women around you. So are you a feminist? There you go. There you go. So uh, just before I let you go, um, if you had to rate this experience compared to Colbert, Seth Mayer, and all the others, <laughs> I mean, one to 10. I mean, considering I'm going back to all of those shows, I hope they don't watch this, but this was definitely 11 on 10. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Priyanka Chopra. Thank you for being such a wonderful audience, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.